Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have a mixed tomato salad with basil dressing, turkey cutlets with sage and prosciutto, and a French praline semi-freddo with chocolate shavings. Lots to do, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to start with is my tomato salad. This tomato salad couldn't be simpler and yet more delicious. Simple ingredients, uh, here we have a variety of different little tomatoes, cherry tomatoes and these yellow tomatoes uh, here and some that we've already cut up. I've done a good part of that cut up so I'm just going to, simple, really quick, I just slice them in half. All different kinds, such beautiful tomatoes out there nowadays. I'm going to add some of these bigger ones. I just want to make sure that I cut them to um, the same proportion. So I'm going to cut these in um, maybe fours. There we go for the tomatoes. And then I'm going to add, make the salad dressing. Um, but before that, I'm going to add some cheese. And for the cheese, I'm, I'm using Gruyere cheese, which is a really nice um, uh, complement to the the tomatoes, it's nice and salty and it's just perfect. And I'm going to cut about, I'm going to cut about two ounces off of this packet. And I'm going to cut these in small dice. Just sprinkle that on top. And what would a tomato salad be without basil? This one really calls for a large amount of um, basil, about three or four, four tablespoons of chopped up basil. I should probably stack these up and then cut them like in a chiffonade, as they say. I think I might do that. It'd be much neater. Maybe I'll make two different piles. So you roll them up like a cigar, a cigar, like so, and it gets, it's much easier. There we go, we put this on top. I think I have just about four tablespoons, but believe it or not. I'm gonna put this on top, lots of green. And then I'm going to make the salad dressing. Simple, olive oil, what, red wine vinegar, just for just a little bit, just to give it a, another um, level of flavor. Salt and pepper. A little bowl, I'm gonna add about um, two tablespoons of oil. It's about one, it's about two. And then I'm adding about two teaspoons, teaspoons of um, vinegar, red wine vinegar. I actually have a measuring spoon. This is a two teaspoon uh, measuring. Put that in here. I'm gonna put about a quarter teaspoon of salt in here. The old hand method, about enough. And then one eighth of um, pepper, black pepper. Freshly grated is nice. I think that will do. So you wanna whisk this together. I'm just gonna pour this over it. And that's it, with one more little surprising addition. One of the things that's fun about cooking and fun having people over for dinner or for your family is that you can surprise them, in, and the best way is to do it in little, little ways, things when they don't expect it. And so one addition to this salad that one wouldn't think of is little matchstick size apple sticks. So this is a Granny Smith apple. I think that's the best to use here. I'm gonna make these really matchstick size. There we go. They make it into a little bunch. I'm gonna put one on each side, like so. There we go. How's that? Isn't that beautiful? Put that over here. Let me it. 
The next thing I want to work on is my turkey cutlets with sage and prosciutto. So here I have four beautiful turkey cutlets that I've already pounded to, so that they're nice and thin. So this, and this recipe is kind of like a, a, a takeoff on um, veal salt and baka, you know, with the, with the prosciutto and the sage. Sage is a, a nice herb that goes uh, very well with, uh, with white meat. So you can use it with pork as well. So here I have four nice pieces, and I'm going to um, heat some oil in the skillet. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of oil in here. So you want to warm this, heat this, heat the oil up. What we're going to do is we are going to, so we're going to take the sage here. These are beautiful leaves here, they're gorgeous, and some prosciutto. Prosciutto is the Italian ham that's, it's cured um, just with salt and it's cured for, I don't know, six months or so, which means it's, it's dried, it's, let, it's allowed to dry. And, uh, and I think they have like special places that they do with special caves. So, uh, so you, you don't want it to be, you, you want it to be in a dry, cool environment so that it, there's, not a, there's not humidity, otherwise it, it'll go bad. Um, so here I'm going to put in just one piece of sage. Sage is a very strong herb, so you want to use um, minimal amounts. So when we talk about, I just want to show you this for a second, uh, when we talk about pounding the meat um, is you just take the meat and then you just use, if you have one of these, like a mallet, this works really good. Every kitchen should have one, it's one of those um, utensils, but I was reading this thing and it said if you don't have a mallet you can use the back of a frying pan. So, so you just kind of want to go like that, just enough to thin it out, and you want to do it on both sides, and I've already done that. so. So I'm going to take a piece of prosciutto, which is very flavorful. Put it right on top. Uh, I need another sage leaf here. So the oil is going. And prosciutto is usually uh, sliced very thin, which sometimes makes it very difficult to peel apart. We've had this sitting out a little bit, so it's gotten warm. When it's cold, it will come, it will come apart much easier, the individual slice. But for our purpose, this, this is okay. There we go. And so then what I'm gonna do to this is just turn it over like a little turnover. Like so. It's really kind of a fun dish. I'm telling you, this is going to be such a fun meal. Kids will love it. So the oil is ready because it's sizzling when, you add, when I added the salt to it. If you have flour, you can do that. You don't want to do it with water because that might just spatter. But uh, flour works well too. So I'm just going to put these in. And these cook really fast. I'm going to turn them over. In the meantime, I'm going to turn it again. See, so this side has got nice and golden brown. And at this point, I'm going to add a shallot that I've um, cut into um, slices already. We'll let this cook in here along with the cut, uh, turkey cutlets. And needless to say, you can substitute uh, chicken 
for the turkey. And you can also do it for like, you know, those thin sliced um, uh, beef sandwich slices. Yeah, you can do it with that as well. Any kind of a pork if you want it to. So any kind of thin sliced cutlet type veal if you really want it to splurge. So I'm going to let that cook in here for a little bit. And then I'm going to take out the cutlets, add some wine to it, and cook that down, and then use that sauce to go over the um, cutlets. Look at that, beautiful. These smell great. Um, if, you, if you're a little nervous and you think the inside may not be fully cooked, what you could do is, is lower the heat, put a lid on, um, on the pan for a few minutes just so that it keeps all the heat in and everything is, is well cooked. So these, I, I believe, seem to be okay. I want to take them out. So you see, this didn't, took hardly any time at all. And I'm going to increase the heat. Uh, put this back in here because I want it to be nice and brown. There we go. And I'm going to increase the heat and add some uh, white wine to this. So here we have the wine. I'm going to add that to it. Cook it down for a little bit. So deglazing the pan. Oh, and, and it smells wonderful. But I will add just a little bit of salt to this liquid just so that, um, you know, I don't want one piece of the dish to be flavorful and the other bland. So, and add just a little bit more salt. Really just let this evaporate dry and um, thicken a little bit. There we have it. I think this is perfect. So I'm going to take this off. Just drizzle it, pour it over the, the turkey. Little turnovers here. Add the shallots. Ah, oh, smells fabulous. And just so that we know, this sage inside here. I'm just going to add a little bit of... What you could do as well is just cook the, uh, some sage leaves in with the meat and then just take them out. I'm just using fresh ones. I'm going to put one more. There we go. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, it smells wonderful. There we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is the French praline semi-fredder with chocolate shavings. So I have uh, half a cup of uh, sugar and two tablespoons of water, and I'm going to melt this. And then to that, I'm going to add um, the almond uh, slices, three quarters of a cup of almond slices. So the French praline is a little different than the American praline in that the French praline, it's just sugar and, and nuts of almonds in this case. In the American, there's more, um, it's more of a sort of, it's much, a much softer um, consistency. So it's a little different. So here I have my almonds and I'm going to add in, mix, you know, stir them in so that each one gets coated with the with the sugar, and so essentially it's going to be like caramelized um, almonds. And the the um, thing to look for uh, whenever you're roasting or, or, or for any kind of um, uh, nuts, because they're high in fat, they can burn really quickly. And even though here we have them in a syrup, that still stands. So I always keep um, an eye on this. So this is in addition to the, the fact that you're working with sugar and it can get really hot, so you don't want to walk away when you're, when you're making this. All right, so this looks pretty good. Yeah, when you say that to yourself, yeah, take them out. Sometimes I'll say that and then continue and then I'm surprised. Then to take them out, you're going to put a piece of parchment paper on a pan and just kind of slide them out. And you've got to do this fairly quickly because otherwise, like this, you know, they will, um, they'll, they will cool off really quick. You want to spread them out.
and allow them to cool. Once they cool, they will look like this. They might have some already made, so I put them on parchment paper. And what I'm going to do now that for my recipe is give them a good chop. Right in here. I'm going to chop them up and set them aside. Needless to say, these taste great to eat just as they are. Also, I'm going to break up some of the bigger pieces. So I don't want to have big chunks when I mix them in my, say my fried dough. Okay, so that's done. The next thing that I need for my semi-freddo is a pastry um, cream. So here I have half, um, I have one cup of milk that I'm going to heat. I'm going to bring the milk to a boil. I'm going to need six egg yolks and six egg whites. I'm going to separate the eggs. So here I have my milk that's um, heating up, and I have my six egg yolks and six egg whites in a separate pan. I'm going to add half a cup of sugar to the egg yolks. There we go, and I'm going to beat that up with my little hand mixer. And to this, I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. That goes right in. And two tablespoons of corn uh, starch. Take that off the heat and make sure this cornstarch gets all in here. I love these little spatulas. I'm going to take it and make sure I get all this in here. All right, this is the most critical part here. Oftentimes when I make pastry cream, I temper the eggs, which means I take some of the hot milk and pour it into the egg. With this recipe, I don't do that. And each time I feel like, ah. Uh, what am I doing? I should be doing it the other way around because the other way around, it's easier not to, that's why not to cook your eggs in here. But I've done it several times and it hasn't happened. Um, so I'm actually, be brave. I've lowered the heat a little bit so it gives me a little, little comfort. And I'm going to add my um, egg mixture into the milk and stir it really quick as I do that. And then what I'll do is wait to see when it comes to a boil, and that way um, it'll start to thicken. I mean, you want to boil it because that's when cornstarch is activated to thicken. So if you lower the heat, you just kind of give yourself a little, a little more room to work. There we go. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. And this happens really quick, maybe like a minute or so. So this here is starting to thicken, I can feel it. I can feel it because, you know, it's becoming harder. So I'm actually gonna take it out, 
take it off the heat and just keep stirring it. If you wanted to make this chocolate, you could add some chocolate cubes, you know, cubes of chocolate, or, or cocoa powder. But anyways, so this is what it looks like. So here I have some already made, and what I do, uh, what you want to do with the pudding is put some uh, cellophane on top so that you don't get that, that crust on it. So I'm going to put this aside because I'm going to need it for the final um, uh, assembly of this recipe. All right, we're almost there. Now the final thing I need to do, this is probably something a little bit new. I'm going to make what's called Italian meringue. In here I have three quarters of a cup of sugar and a quarter cup of water. So essentially what I'm making is a simple syrup. It's just, uh, and, and I'm going to cook it to the soft syrup stage. So once that comes to a boil, I've sort of timed it. Once this comes to a boil, I start mixing the meringue. And then as I get to the point where, where that's at that soft stage, the syrup is at a soft stage, and I can pour it in the meringue. So you want to make sure that your beaters are nice and clean, super clean. I'm going to add to this a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar to the egg whites. So these are the six egg whites that I got from earlier. And I need a quarter of a teaspoon. And before I add this in, I'm just going to break the egg whites up a little bit. I don't know why I just do. the cream of tartar. All right, so the, um, I'm also going to add a teaspoon of rum extract to my, um, to my egg whites. So this is like, this is going to be the meringue. All right, so before I go any further, I'm going to just mention a couple of things. So this is the Italian meringue, which is the egg whites that I've actually cooked with this hot syrup, because we're not going to be cooking the, the, the semi-fred, though it's going to be, you know, cold. It's, it's semi-fred is like ice cream, but it, it's a little softer. So it's semi-cold, as the name implies. So here I have the um, simple syrup, and this is so hot that, believe it or not, the, the mixture actually gets hot. And so you want to you want to beat it, you want to whip it to the until it's nice and cold, and you get these beautiful stiff peaks on the egg whites. So, so simple sugar into the into egg whites is called an Italian meringue. That's where the name comes from. Now that we know, so now this is going to be really noisy. So I won't be talking. So these peaks are, are, are pretty, um, pretty stiff. This is still warm, so we actually have one already made, so I don't have to wait till this cools off. But if you were making it at home, you, in order, if you wanted to, you could actually place this in a nice bowl, uh, ice, water with ice in it, and, and cool it off that way as you, as you were whipping it, because that makes, a, makes it nice and, and thick. So in the meantime, where I have it, um, I have this here already made, and we do have one already prepared. So I want to give this, so now comes the assembly time. So this, all the work has been done, so now we're going to just assemble. I'm going to give this um, pastry cream just a quick whip. Just to freshen it up a little bit. I won't be needing these. Okay, so now I'm going to fold the meringue into the pastry cream. I'll, I'll put in a little bit at first, so it's just kind of just to soften up the uh, pastry cream a little bit, and then just, and then I will add the rest of it just by just folding over like that simple technique.
So in goes the rest of it. So again, you want to beat this until it gets really cold. So just um, fold it in gently because you don't want to deflate all that beautiful air that we just whipped into it. So now I'm going to add my praline here. So again, you want to make ahead of time. So you can do this. It might take sort of an afternoon sometime only because you want to, you have to allow things to cool. Or I'm, I'm going to leave some of the whole ones on the side for garnishing later. Or uh, you can make things in step. And then I'm going to add chocolate. This is about two ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. Again, you could also add fruit instead of the chocolate. And just gently fold this in. Can you see that? So again, you, you don't want to fold, you know, be in it for too long. You just want to make sure that the nuts and the praline are, are well spread out throughout the batter. The fun part comes when you can put it into whatever mold you like. You can put it in a regular cake pan. You can put it in a... Um, uh, some other fancy dish. Oh, I like to do uh, uh, to do it in a ring in this uh, in a loaf pan because I like that shape. So you want to line your um, whether it's a pan or whatever um, dish you're using with, um, with this is saran wrap with saran wrap so that um, it'll be easy to take out. So you're going to put this in the freezer for at least three hours before serving. You can serve it two ways. You can actually scoop it out like ice cream or you can cut it in slices. Then, well I've used up all my chocolates, so I'm just going to garnish it with a few more uh, praline here on top. There we go. So when you're ready to take it out, what I like to do is I take a knife. Uh, you could, you can put it in, you know, like a little bit of warm water to sort of loosen it up. Um, or you could just take a knife and lift up the plastic wrap here and just go around it to loosen it up a little bit. And then you, you would grab these ends and it just kind of pops up. So, in, so then I put it in the freezer. If I'm going to use it, for example, tomorrow or the day after, after a few hours, I'll cover the top because I don't want it to get any freezer burn or anything. So I cover the top with some more, with additional cellophane. And when you unmold it, it looks like this. Isn't this beautiful? Just looks like you've, you've been, you bought it, store bought, only better because you've made it in, with fresher ingredients. So over this goes to our table. And here we have another quick, simple, uh, delicious dinner for guests, for family, for yourself. And today we've made a delicious, simple uh, mixed tomato salad with basil dressing. We've made a simple turkey turnover, if you want, and you can call them with sage and prosciutto, sort of the salt and bock style. And then for dessert, this is the queen of desserts, is the uh, French praline semi freddo with chocolate shavings. And I want to thank um, Calorese's Farm Stand and Garden Center for some of the wonderful produce they offered us. And also, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.